Have you ever noticed that Christian systematic theology texts happen to be three to five inches thick? Here's Wayne Grudem's and Daniel Aiken's a Theology for the Church. Why is it so thick? Systematic theologies are a collection of biblical doctrines on various issues, from the doctrine of God to the doctrine of Revelation, Christology to Revelation, and those doctrinal studies are all based on taking nine steps for each of the doctrines. So what I want to share with you now is what those basic nine steps are. Thanks to Millard Erickson, I've adapted his method, and yet most people use this method. Uh, the other thing that's important about taking this method is the world is dying for truth clearly and passionately spoken. And if you use this method in your church, you will be able to speak truth uh, with a sense of spiritual authority. God will add the authority if you will speak the truth clearly and share the truth in love. Here are the nine steps. First, dig out the biblical truth. Dig. Digging is not easy. It's like mining. You have to dig deep. So if I was working on a theology of marriage, uh, I would look for everything from Genesis to Revelation. Look through the Gospels. Look through the prophets. Every single text that has to do with marriage, dig it all out and make a pile now, once I go through that, I want to organize all those scriptures. Um, which scriptures speak about persons who got married? Which scriptures speak about um, maybe divorce? So I want to organize those piles. And once I've done that, I construct uh, teachings or statements, truths, that are based on each of those piles. For instance... If I took all of the questions that Jesus was asked in the Gospels, I could actually sort those out into two piles. Jesus was either asked questions about how to get into the kingdom of God, or he was asked ethical questions about how do I live in a kingly way within the framework of the kingdom. So evangelism questions, getting in, or ethical questions, how to live in the kingly and royal way. So now, once I have those piles, I can look through all those questions about entering the kingdom and make some statements about evangelism according to Jesus and make some ethical statements according to the statements of Jesus and the answer to the questions, how do I live in a kingly way? Next, after I have these, these statements, I want to look and see how other Christians, present or past, have answered those same questions. How have they dealt with those texts? So I want to test each of my statements against what Calvin, Luther, Augustine, uh, what other Christians have said, so that I can come to a restatement that includes their wisdom. Now, I may not agree with it. Maybe I think they overlook these biblical verses, uh, but I want to restate it with their insights uh, based upon the study I did myself or we did in community or church together. Next, I want to look for insights outside the Bible. For instance, if I was doing a theology of suicide, uh, we know from uh, medical uh, reports related to suicide that there's a connection between suicide and drug addiction. We also know from anthropology that different cultures value suicide in a different way. Some admire it. For some, it's the only way to save face if you've brought shame on the family. So those insights um, give uh, some understanding that can help us come to a new and fresh statement, especially one that will make sense uh, in the context and culture we're trying to present the gospel or share the truth or do discipleship. For instance, uh, I live in Marin County, and there are a lot of communities in Marin that are gated. And for me to study the kingdom of God and salvation, I came to the conclusion one way uh, to state uh, how the kingdom of God works is to say the kingdom of God is a gated community. And we know we've got a new fresh statement if it actually causes conversation to go deeper. Now, I don't want to make a statement that ends conversation or is boring or is not relevant. Uh, I want to want, have one that's biblically sound, but also culturally relevant. So to call the kingdom of God a gated community makes people think of the gated communities they've been at and ask the question, well, if it's gated, who gets in? How do you get in? That's the kind of conversation I want to start. 
So with reference to all of the doctrines, all of the issues that I've, I've studied and the statements I've come up with, now I need to elect an organizing or theological motif. Um, in Millard Erickson's Christian Theology, he said, my organizing motif is the magnificence of God. He wanted to uh, write a systematic theology that was like a hymn of praise to God. Uh, Aikens edited a theology for the church. So his motif is simply ecclesiology. Uh, theology should assist and instruct and inform and inspire the church uh, to be what Christ has called it to be. John Calvin used the sovereignty of God as one of his motifs. W.T. Connor used uh, salvation in Christ as his organizing principle. So once you've elected your theological motif, you can stratify your systematic theology uh, into a three to five inch volume that makes sense and has an order according to this motif or life verse that you've selected. Systematic theology, developing Christian truth and doctrine, is not easy. That's why most people won't do it. But we're called to do the hard work of theology because our world responds to truth clearly spoken. I hope you and your church will be hard and after the good work of developing doctrine in this step-by-step -step way. Thanks for listening.